Hi, this is Kerry with Filmmaker Central, and I've got yet another RGB light to talk about. This one is the Pixel G1. So stay right there. We'll be right back. Yeah, it certainly seems like everybody is on this form factor bandwagon right now. We've seen the lights from bowling, from uh, Falcon Eyes, uh, from Digital Photo. We saw a new one released recently from LoomCube. And now I have the Pixel G1. And just like the other ones, it is the same form factor, about the size of an iPhone. Uh, this is an iPhone XS, so damn near identical in size. Has the LED lights on it with RGB controls, has a little screen on the back to see all the different features and a little hue meter so you can kind of tell what number is going to represent what color and it has the controls on the side. So let's take a look at what makes this one interesting and uh, we'll kind of go from there. Uh, like I said, I'm loving this form factor. If you haven't got a light like this, there's definitely a lot to choose from right now. They all have strengths, they all have weaknesses, they all have different features. You gotta find the one that fits what you wanna do and how you wanna work. And this is yet another one. And I'm really glad that they sent this one to me because I, I'm just digging these lights. You can see I've got two of them behind me, not, not the same, they're, they're different ones. But there's, a, let's see, over here, I've got the Bowling P1, over here, I have the Falcon Eyes uh, F7. So I love these lights for practical effect and just being able to throw a splash of color or daylight color or warm color or cool color, whatever you're trying to do, these types of lights are really handy for adding that extra punch of light somewhere. So I'm, I'm definitely a huge fan of these lights. I think everybody should get their hands on one. Um, so you just gotta pick which one you'll like, really is what it boils down to. So this is a Pixel G1. And what does this guy do? It's a 4,040 milliamp battery 360 degrees of color with the hue, saturation, and luminance, 3200 to 5600 uh, color temperature. Not as good as the Falcon Eyes. I gotta say, Falcon Eyes really nailed it on that huge range of color temperature. But 3200 to 5600 is gonna give you warm to daylight. And then it has a handful of special effects that we've seen. It charges over USB-C. It can be used as a power bank to charge your phone. So um, a couple different features there. Has a nice solid aluminum case on it. Quarter 20 screws on the top, bottom, and side, and the other side has the controls. Now you get the light, you get a cold shoe mount, and in this case, you get a pretty nice uh, hard shell case to keep it in. And inside of here, we have a small little ball head, which is really nice. You don't need anything big. These things are super light. You have your USB-C cable and you have this other cable, which is female USB-A to USB-C. And that's the one you can use to charge devices. So you can plug the USB-C into the light and then your USB-C device into the other side if you need to use this as a power bank. So, Interesting feature. Don't know that I would keep one handy as a power bank. I have much bigger ones, um, but in a pinch, why not? Uh, it can definitely work. In terms of the little ball head, this is definitely the smallest ball head that I've seen on any of these so far. It's metal construction. You know, at first glance, it may seem a little cheap, but it is metal which is really nice it feels like i mean i've got it tightened down i didn't even crank it all the way and it's got good holding power more than enough for this light only thing only thing i wish they would have done on this would have a quarter 20 adapter on the bottom of this which would just really have made this thing a lot nicer but hey whatever 
uh, you got a lot of functionality here. Now let's take a look at the light itself. You have, like I said, the screen, we have a power button on top and the controls on the side. So to start it, we hold down the power until it turns on. Well, it's on and it says it's on, but it's not on. And let's see here. I've got it set 25% because this one has a really interesting um, standby feature. Uh, I haven't seen this on any of the other ones. So you turn it on and the light just doesn't come on. You can actually go through and get it all set up with whatever feature you want and then hit the power button again to actually activate it. So that's kind of different. And then if you've got your light set up and you just need to you know, rearrange some things, you don't have to go over, turn it off, and then turn it back on. You can just tap it once, turn it off, do whatever work you need to do, come back, just tap it once, and it turns back on. So that's kind of a handy feature. Uh, like I said, haven't seen that in any of the other ones, so something that's different. Now, this one doesn't have as many of the special effects that the, some of the other ones have, but they're very, very easy to access. So, a little different there. So, I'm going to go ahead and go into the mode. Let's see, what mode am I in right now? So, I'm in just regular uh, daylight or color temperature mode. So, I'm at 5,600 degrees right there. Nice little light pattern and we can crank this down to 3200 get a nice warm look on it so i wish that had a broader range but it's, it's still it's not bad at all and now we can go through and hit the top one which is the mode and we start off in lightning mode and over on the side i have three modes here i have lightning uh I guess kind of a color shift and the, I guess, uh, whatever I would call it, it would be public safety type of thing. So this is the first lightning mode here. And when I'm in that mode, I can then adjust the brightness and I can have three different lightning modes. There's A, B, and C. So, this one is just kind of a pulsating light. We'll go to B, which is kind of a heavy flash. And then A is just another variation of the strobe. We'll go to mode again, and now we're in the color shift mode. And this is A, so I'm just kind of running through the different colors. B. It's a little faster. And then C is kind of this, uh, I guess they call this like a candlelight mode. So it's just the warm temperature. So if you're trying to emulate someone at a campfire or at reading by a candle, something like that, then this one would work really well. So we'll go to the public safety one, and this is uh, B, which is what it started in here. So this is the blue and white. I'll shift that to A, which is the police, which is red and blue. And then C is the red and white. And then you hit mode again, and now we're in the hue, saturation, and brightness. I'm going to turn down the color here, or the brightness here. Maybe we can see this a little bit better. But once I go into the hue, saturation, and brightness, it starts off with the hue. So that allows me to change the color. So I'll set it to a nice red. I hit mode again, and now I'm in the saturation. So I can crank the saturation down to almost white and all the way up to a very, very vivid red. I hit mode again, and I'm now into the color temperature mode. And I don't think there's any way of going back and forth. You have to toggle through them all. So when I'm on the hue and saturation, I set my hue, I get set my saturation, and then I can 
control the brightness level as well. So could use a little help on the interface here, but it's still not a bad light. The out oh, output is really nice, really bright. The colors are very vibrant, nothing to complain about there. I'm gonna just tap that to turn it off. It has a pretty nice diffusing pattern uh, or shield on here. That's pretty nice. Doesn't have too bad of banding, but when you're really up close, just like all the other ones, if you're really up close on something, that's when you'll get the banding because of the individual lines of the LEDs. So what's this one gonna run you? This one is one, I'm looking at Amazon right now, $129.99. So uh, not a bad price for a RGB light. Some of them are in that 150 range. So if you wanna save a little bit of money, this one is going to be a better value or a better, I'm not, shouldn't say value, but it's definitely a better price than the Falcon Eyes. Although the Falcon Eyes, you know, being, you know, 30, 40 bucks more expensive is definitely better in terms of the number of effects and a better interface. Plus it has that diffuser that stands out a little bit and the honeycomb grid, which I really like. So you're getting more, but you're paying more. Here, you're gonna pay less, you're gonna get a little less, but for 130 bucks, it's still a great product here. Let me take a look at some of these other specs here. Uh, the rated or the claimed CRI on here is 97. That is the highest of any of these in terms of CRI. Now, what does a high CRI mean? It means that you're gonna get very good color reproduction. So if I'm using, let's see, I'll go back here to the daylight and let's see, I should be able to match this to, uh, let's see, 3200, I'm gonna take a good, so my overhead light here says it's 5600. If I use this light, then it, it's set up 5600. My, the colors of my skin tone should be nice. If I'm doing a product, the colors should be very accurate. So that's what a high CRI value gets you, is good color reproduction. Something with a low CRI, the colors may be a little off because the light is gonna be a little off. It's not gonna be a full spectrum of light. So you really wanna have something with at least a 95 CRI, and this one claims to be a 97. Now, I don't have a tool to actually put that to the test. I really wish I did, because then I could really do a good comparison between all of these. Uh, let's see here. It says it can be fully charged in two and a half hours and offers 90 minutes of operation at 100% power. So good battery life with a fairly quick charge time. And let's see, what do you get in the box? The, the light, the carrying case, cold shoe adapter, the charging cable, the Type-C to USB cable for output, and the manual, but they don't mention that you get the cool little uh, ball mount, which, like I said, I think this is very cool. If you're going to put this on your camera, you want a little bit of adjustability in terms of the tilting and things like that. If you're going to bounce it, if you're going to put it on a light stand, that's where it is kind of the the setback on this one because this the other mount is a cold shoe mount, and this is a cold shoe mount. So if I put it just on a light stand, it's just gonna be straight. I don't have any way of tilting it since the cold shoe uh, or the ball mount doesn't have a, uh, a quarter 20 on the bottom. Well, and actually I'm gonna take everything I just said back because I just unscrewed the cold shoe mount and there is a quarter 20 on the bottom of this making this the tiniest ball mount I think I've ever seen. So yeah, absolutely. If I'm gonna put this on a, a tripod or a light stand that's got a quarter 20 on it, just remove the base and you have a very flexible uh, ball mount system here. So good job, Pixel. Um, that all of a sudden, I'm much more impressed with this little ball mount. Now, in this video, I don't want to go into a, a 
head-to-head -head comparison against all of them. There's, I got all the different videos on the different lights that you can check out and check out all the different features. If you're really into the special effects and you want those extra modifiers that come with it, the Falcon Eyes is going to be a good bet. If you like the really interesting mount that is on the bowling, now maybe that one's going to be a good choice. And I, I like the, the runtime on the bowling. It's probably the heaviest of them. Well, maybe I think the Falcon Eyes is probably heavier. But the bowling is definitely a great light. And this one, if this actually does do the 97 CRI, then in terms of a key light or a fill light, this is going to be a, a real winner because of that accurate color reproduction. So definitely want to check this out if you're looking at some of these small form factor lights that are hitting the market right now. I'm a huge fan of all of these. Not one of them that has come across my desk is one that I would go, no, don't get this one. I haven't seen one of those yet. Now, going back to a light like this, this is the Aperture Amaran F1. And I definitely like this light. This has been a great light. It is adjustable in color temperature, but it doesn't have an internal battery. I have to use a Sony NPF style battery. I can power it over USB-C, but I don't get full uh, output on it. But I could put a huge battery on this thing and have it last for a long, long time. But in terms of size, I'm not really gaining anything in terms of size. It does have more individual LEDs that are all going to be just that same uh, color temperature range. There's no RGB on this one. So while this is a great light, it's bigger and it requires external batteries where these new ones with this tiny form factor have great runtime, great color reproduction, full RGB, as well as uh, a great price. Like I said, this one is only $129.99. Now, you may never have heard of Pixel before, and frankly, neither had I. Never heard of them. And <coughs> to be totally honest, they saw my videos that I've done on the other lights like this, and they reached out to me and asked if I would take a look at it and if I wanted to, to do a review on it. So I did not pay for this. This is one that they sent me. Uh, full disclosure there, but they're not paying me to do this. Uh, they just sent me the light to try out, and I like it. It's a good light. Um, I'm going to show it to my friends and let them make their own decisions on which ones that they think might be best suited for them, but I think you can't go wrong with any of these. They're all really, really good lights. It just kind of depends on what you're looking for and the specific features. If you don't need all those crazy special effects, the police lights and things like that. You just want hue, saturation, and, and luminance. Then why spend more when this one will do the job? So you can, but why? If you want all those extra special effects and all those some of the other features and the other modifiers, then you're going to want to spend a little bit more on something that's a little fancier, like the Falcon Eyes, which like I said that is my favorite. It's more expensive, but it has more things. This one is definitely right up there along with all the other ones in terms of its build quality. I mean, this is a solid, solid construction in terms of the effects. It has enough special effects in here. You really don't need tons of different things. The only thing that would make any of these better, including this one, would be if I had an app that I could connect to it and create my own custom patterns or you know, light shows, and if I could tweak like the lightning settings so that they were more of what I was actually trying to accomplish for a specific scene. None of them do that today. So uh, when somebody does do that, that will be a big win and push that one much further than the other ones that are out there, probably next year, because all of these are just hitting the market right now. So check it out, it's Pixel, P-I-X-E-L, on Amazon, Link in the description below, link in the article at filmmakercentral.com. And uh, like I said, winner in my book, just uh, just as good as any of the rest of them. I do like the standby feature. 
one touch, turn it on, one touch, turn it off, and then you have to hold it to actually shut down the device. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. So thanks for watching everybody. This has been Kerry with Filmmaker Central. Be sure and join the discussion at facebook.com slash groups slash Filmmaker Central. We're discussing different things, new products. We've got people like Klaus from Duke Denver Film who posts his videos there, picking up more and more people every week, trying to build a great community of filmmakers over there. So check that out. For all of you who keep asking, yes, I do have a Patreon page. The link is down below, patreon.com slash G. Really appreciate all the support. Be sure and like, subscribe, share, check that bell icon to be notified whenever there's a new video out. Thanks for watching, everybody. This has been Carrie with Filmmaker Central. I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.